Hey guys, what's up? It's Asim from East Coast RCs, and today we are doing an unboxing and review and drive of the Panda Hobbies Tetra X2. Let's get started and open it up. Well, obviously, as you can see as I open it, um, there's the tape is already cut. I did open this already and I have seen the truck, just so that way you guys didn't have to just look at me just cutting open boxes and ripping open bags and stuff and um so yeah so let's get this thing all unpackaged all right, so i've set up the camera up here that way you guys can see it from kind of an overhead view so let's get this thing open and oh boy there it is here's the truck here i'll get i'll show you guys a better look at it next after we show everything that comes in the box so obviously everything comes in the box here truck and then have this box right here of these other things so here let's um so and then obviously you have your instruction manual and you have this little backdrop thing that a lot of the mini crawlers are coming with so let's set this box aside we'll open up the parts box or accessories box rather well, they're not really accessories they're mandatory items so you got your remote right here it's a pretty nice remote it's made by it looks like it's made by panda hobbies 2.4 gigahertz pretty nice little remote and then you got your here you got your little extra stuff here you got your, your gears and your channel three thing for the lights um then you got all sorts of other trims and binding button binding and stuff like that so we'll set that aside for now and then inside you got all sorts of other things so you have your battery right here which is a 2s lipo 700 milliamps battery it comes with that by the way it's included and then right here you have your charger We'll open up that up, take a look. There it is. Just your little um, wall USB charger. You can just connect it to a charging brick and then plug it into like a household style wall outlet. This little thing. And then on the battery, you see you got your two connectors. You got this red one here, which is to connect it to the ESC. And then you have this little white one right here, which is to connect it. To the charger right there so that's, that'll be handy to have and then you have your uh i think these are double a batteries for the remote Open them up. come on get out of here there we go yeah so just standard uh aa or double a batteries i don't really trust these things i'm probably just gonna use um just kind of regular ones like a duracell or something like that these ones i don't really recognize these or anything like that so i probably won't, won't be using these and then you have this little thing with just a little pin right there and then a, a tool and then your spacers and extra pins for the body but let's set all this stuff aside i'll just throw it all back in the box except for the battery i'll keep the battery out so we can drive the car and let's take the car out so let me adjust the camera better so you guys can see the car when I show it to you guys. And here it is. Here is the Hand Hobbies Tetra X2 Bronco truck. This truck does come in, in a couple of different colors. It comes in a little bit cooler colors than this. Um, this one we just, uh, right when I ordered it actually, I noticed that there were a lot of um, other cooler colors that it comes in. I'll show you guys those colors in a few minutes. But, yeah, it's pretty cool. Bye. You got your light bar up here. All these lights work. You don't need to supply your own um, light kit. It's got reverse, um, or not reverse, oh, it does have reverse lights down here. And then you got um, brake lights um, right there. Then you got a light bar and two headlights, which are great. You have these little body clips, which are mini, they're really small, which can be annoying because then they're easy to lose, but it's not a big deal. It's not like they're an expensive part or anything like that body clips off <laughs> yeah so now obviously when you take the body off you're just gonna be able to carefully you can't just rip it off because you got all these wires here which is off a lot of wires um <clears throat> connecting to the, the lights and everything so here we'll plug a we'll plug this in and then we'll get some batteries for the uh transmitter so i think this just goes in pretty easily you just slide it in this little velcro thing right here 
get it in there. Come on. It does struggle a little bit, but it's not shouldn't be that difficult. Uh, you just clip it in. It's not like it's gonna be wiggling around too much. It might might fall out of here, but then again, you got your body to protect it. And then you just take red connector and plug it into plug it into this. Right there. <clears throat> Goes in pretty easily, not too difficult. And then it's in, and then it might take a minute for like the lights to connect and stuff. I'm not sure why. Oh, yeah. I turn the. Alright. And we'll turn the car on. You just got this little button down there. You can't see very well because it's covered by a million wires, but turn it on. And then right when you turn the car on, it takes a second, but then you got your, your brake lights here. Um. And all these lights will probably turn on, like turn on by themselves and stuff like that. When I turn on the transmitter, I think I have to adjust the settings on the transmitter for the lights, the light settings. But, um, yeah, so I'm just going to go grab some batteries uh, for the transmitter. By the way, we'll the transmitter right just takes four um, uh, AA batteries. All right, guys, so I'm back. I've got these batteries right here that we'll just plug in, and I'll put them in, and then... I'll be right so I finally got the body clips on, got the batteries in. Just gotta flip this little switch up, turn the transmitter on. Got some torque in the steering. Oh, jeez. Not that slow for a mini crawler. All right, here, let's um, let's set it up on the floor and just do a little quick speed test. Okay, so here, I'm gonna test out the different speeds that we got here, the different gears. I'm gonna go in the low gear, so slow speed. So it is pretty slow, backs up pretty slow. All right, so here, let's get it aligned and we'll go to the medium speed. Okay, so let's go on the medium speed. Let's see how that goes. Oh, jeez. It's actually not that slow, it's pretty fast. It's pretty fast for a little mini crawl. And now we'll go on high speed and see how that goes. That's pretty fast for a little mini crawler, I gotta say. Actually, not that slow. It's got some torque to it. It's definitely got a lot of torque to it. Oh, this thing has a lot of torque twist, though. I will notice. I'll show you guys. For those who don't know, um, torque twist is basically when you go, and then you go forward, and then the body turns one way, and then you go back the other way. By the way, guys, here's the light kit. Oh, looking looks pretty sick. It's got the, uh, got the headlights and the light bar with the brake lights and reverse lights. And you can adjust that right here with the little channel three switch up there. Turn them off or turn them on. But yeah, it's definitely a pretty cool light kit. And it comes with the car too. By the way guys, so this is, just to make it clear, this is a 118th scale mini car. So it is a bit bigger than like your, your usual like Axial SCX24, Enduro 24, which we reviewed a few days ago. But um, yeah, this thing has a starting price or a price on amazon for 130 bucks which i think is a pretty great price for what you get i mean you get the the radio this built-in um included light kit a battery batteries for the remote even if they're not good i mean they're you still get them um and yeah it's just a not you know four wheel drive crawler all that kind of good stuff i mean it's 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 a pretty good value for what it is in my opinion i think it's a pretty good price for um for what it is but uh yeah so um yeah, so, yeah. I also want to quickly point out that, um, uh, unlike other, most other mini crawlers, this thing does come with oil-filled shocks, which is definitely a, um, a, a better, better choice than other, than what other crawlers have. And really quick, guys, I'll just show you guys the different colors that this truck comes in. So this is actually, so the lineup is a bit confusing with these trucks. You got the one that we have here, this, the brown or tan Bronco is called the Tetra x2 but then you got the jeep which is the tetra x1 and then you got another lineup that's that um that's uh basically a truck uh bronco bronco without a cover on the back um is called the tetra x2t so it's like it's a little confusing but i guess uh yeah x2 truck that would make kind of sense but yeah with the um with the uh yeah with the uh, yeah with the color here with the x1 you got all sorts of different color options. You got all sorts of these Jeeps, these little modified Jeeps, which are pretty cool. And then um, I'll go down. 
And then this is the other color option of the X2. See right there. This is the other color option of the X2, which which um would have actually been a pretty cool color to get it in, but um I don't think they had it on Amazon. That's why we just uh, got the brown one instead. And then down here, you got your six wheeled ones. This one here. Yeah, like X1 six by six. It's not available yet. It looks like it's only available for pre-order. Looks like it's uh, about 10 or 20 bucks more than the X1 and X2. And you got your six wheeled vintage truck there. It's pretty cool looking. And you have the four by four. And just show. This is a pretty cool, pretty, definitely a pretty cool lineup. And here on Amazon over here, got um, and here are the colors of the pickup truck version of this um, of this truck here. So you got this one right here, which is basically the pickup truck version of the one that we have, um, in a different color. And then well, these are all that's all kind of what these are. And then you got this blue one here with the uh, cover on the bed, looking pretty cool. And then you got this red one here. This looks pretty sick in my opinion. I think this might be my favorite one. Although this one with a cover on the back would look pretty cool. And then you have the yellow one right here, which isn't available for a little bit. So it's available on April 13th. But um, yeah, these these colors are all pretty sick. In my opinion, so the, the blue one in my opinion is a bit weird because the headlight, um, the headlight and tail light and light bar lenses are um are, bl are tinted blue, so it might come out a bit weird. But I suppose it's not really a big deal. Oops. Uh, I suppose it's not really a big deal. Though. All right, guys, so now I'm going to do a little bit of a mini test here. So I'm going to take my treadmill, and I'm going to go to the max elevation setting, which I'm not sure this isn't very scientific because I don't know, like, how high that is or anything like that. It doesn't say anywhere on the treadmill. And then I'm going to go at a pretty slow speed. I'm only going to make the treadmill go, like, one mile an hour. But I'm going to – so here, we'll, we'll power it on, and then we'll, we'll bring it all the way up. So we'll, turn, we'll power it on right here. Safety garden. Press start. Okay, so it's starting up. I'm just gonna elevate it to the maximum. It'll take a minute, and while it's doing while it's doing this, I'll get the car. Bring it up. Okay, so that's at maximum. I'm just gonna leave the speed at one, and now. We will grab the truck here and um, and the radio and all that stuff and we'll get and to here's drive. a look at the incline that we're dealing with here. It's pretty it's pretty um it's not too steep, but then again you got this going here, so let's see this. So I'm gonna set the cameras up, I'll put the car down and we'll give it a little test drive. Alright guys, so we have the truck right here, so I'm just gonna set it down. I'm gonna, trim, I'm gonna be trying I'm gonna try to be kinda quick with this. Um, I'll just set it down and we'll see. Which I'm gonna. Alright, we got it in high gear. And it seems to make it up that no problem. Okay, now we'll shift into the, the medium gear. Still make it up pretty good. And then we'll shift into the low gear. So it seems to make it up pretty good. All right, here, now let's uh, let's adjust the speed on the tremble. We'll go, we'll go, we'll go three miles an hour. Just bring that up a bit. And there we go. All right, we'll try three miles an hour. We'll see if that, see if that still works. I'll put it in high gear, start off, and go smaller. Let's go. Oops. Start was a little bit at the beginning, but it seems to be fine. As I mentioned earlier, this thing has a lot of torque twists, as you can already see. I am shifting the medium here. I'm going to shift. Oh. Alright, there we go. Oh, medium gear is struggling a bit. Oh, alright, so we'll try that again. Again, this is medium gear. It doesn't seem to get up three miles an hour in the medium gear. Yeah, I think in the, oh, I think in the uh, three miles an hour territory on the treadmill, we need to go in the high gear. Even in high gear, for some reason, now it's really struggling. Oh, that's weird. A minute ago, it wasn't struggling too much in the high gear, but now it seems to be struggling 
This is high gear at three miles an hour on the treadmill with max incline. And it does not seem to be able to get up. It keeps a consistent speed, but does not seem to be able to get up. And it seems to be falling back a bit. Here, we'll try, we'll try two miles an hour, because I kind of skipped it at one mile an hour. So we'll, we'll try two. Let's go down to two. Right, we'll go, we'll start off high gear. I seem to make it up just fine. Oh, oh. Oh, I think that the battery died. Forgot to mention the battery. Oh, yeah, the battery is not does not seem to be fully charged here. Okay, so right now might be a good time to test out the um, the wall charger here. So I got this. Just take this little cap off, throw it down here, and then I'm just gonna plug this brick in and plug it in the wall and see how fast. Right, so you can see that it's charging. It's got the red light. Um, for some reason it has a green light blinking. I think that just means charging, charging. Um, but um. Yeah, we'll, so we'll wait till that, we'll wait till that's done. We'll wait till this is solid green. I think this is supposed to be solid green. Got the battery plugged in right here. So you plug it in through this white cable right here, this white end piece. This cable right here you use to plug it in the car, but then you have another cable to plug it into the charger. But yeah, so we'll see how long that takes. It's advertised to to take about 30 minutes to um to fully charge, so we'll see how true that really is but yeah i'm just gonna let it charge here. all right guys we are back so this thing only took about 30 35 minutes to charge which is really a great charging time in my opinion that's really fast but um yeah it only took about 30 to 35 minutes to charge now we're gonna take it to the proper mini car track at my local hobby shop it's called rc madness it's in enfield connecticut it's a really great hobby store you guys should check them out um they got some cool inventory and they also have a lot of cool tracks but um yeah check them out but yeah so we're gonna we're gonna bring this there and drive it around and give it a little yes, test. We're run. here with the, with the pen hobbies. We got a uh, Connor right there with the Enduro 24 that we reviewed a few days ago. But let's give this thing a little run. It might be a bit yeah. big for this track, but we'll we'll, we'll see what happens. Guys, we got it in low gear, so let's give it a run. Oh. It's hung up a little bit. It's definitely not meant for this, this course. Oh no. Oh, and you flipped. And a flip. It's a little big for this course. It is a little bit big. Yeah, it is a bit big. I'll get it for you. I'll put it in a medium gear. There we go. Oh, oh boy. Oh, no! Oh! oh. I caught it, boy. You caught it. Okay, something not a bit small. This 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 uh, this track is a little bit small down for the for the track. But yeah, it's like a pretty good. Yeah, let me try it up here. Let me smooth the God, oh my god, Ethan. Oh, oh, oh. Maniac. Yeah, this thing is definitely really big. For it's a little, a little bit too big. Look at this, this is a size comparison. This is a size comparison. So, guys, this is a 20 foot scale crawler right here, and this is 18, 18 scale. So it's a little. A lot size bigger. Definitely, definitely different. It's not a lot, lot bigger, but it's definitely quite a bit bigger. Yeah, like right here, it's just, it just fits on this platform here. So it is definitely a bit big. Try to get up this. Even this, it's like fairly thick. Yeah, it's stuck. Yeah, so. Can I give it a go? Oh, yeah, here, let's I have a. I won't go over here. Let's have a. Oh yeah, because it can't really get, it can't go through this because the light bar is a bit too, a bit bad, but yeah, we'll give a, let Connor have a go driving it. Very different. They're definitely Very, different from the, like, definitely so different from speed. the Enduro. It has so much speed. Yeah. Yeah. This is so hard to drive. Yeah, I'll try and go back to Yeah, yeah, try to. Yeah. How do you put it in like a lower gear? Uh, so you take um. Oh, I see. Yeah, so you got the gear in here. Yeah. 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 Y
It's just a little like switch thing. Yeah, this, this color is definitely a great color. This track a little too small for this color. for outdoors. And we would um, we would go on the um, the big the big crawler track over there, as you can see, but it's closed right now. It is. Um, yeah, it is actually for them. For there's a race going on, I think, or like a, a cut. Yeah, it's a race or something like that. No, it's kind of going on right now, but I think they have it set up, so we're not supposed to go on it, which is fine. Okay, but maybe maybe here. All right, so let's close up shop here, and then we'll take this to. Maybe like my backyard or something. We'll, we'll test out with some rocks because this isn't going too too well. So this is this uh this um track is more for ten scales or not ten scales, twenty fold scales. Ten scales would be breaking all the stuff here. All right, see you soon, guys. All right, guys. So we are back from the um track at RC Manus. Unfortunately, and by the way, yes, we have the um we just got in a uh a, um pan, uh, Tetra X2. This is actually the X2T because it's a truck um pickup truck. Um, we have it, we got it in this different color, but unfortunately the, the track was not, um, big enough, or was not, uh, yeah, it was not big enough for this truck. One thing I know, one thing I noticed on the X2T, the truck version, the pickup truck version, is that with the body, um, you see, obviously, since this is a truck, the body mounts don't need to be as high, because normally on the, on the brown we just had, they go up to here, but there, since the truck body's down there, so the mounts are a lot shorter, meaning that this, bar thing is down meaning that the battery cables have to kind of wrap around this which is not really i mean it's not a huge deal but it's just i don't know i just thought i'd point out you gotta kind of route these cables really hard i mean i i can't i can't move these cables anymore these these cables are they're really short so they're kind of being stretched almost which I, it isn't really great for them but i mean it's not a huge deal but still these these the body mounts are way lower which also since the cables are like right next to it Putting the body on is a bit more of a challenge um, than it is with the uh, with the body with the with the bed cap. But in my opinion, it's all worth it. I mean, in my opinion, this this pickup truck version looks way better than the one with the um with the cab cap or with the bed cap rather. Um, yeah, in my opinion, this is this looks this one looks way better. I even put a little license plate sticker on the back it does the truck version comes with a sticker kit which is kind of cool in my opinion it comes with a bunch of different license plates um from all different like countries and stuff i think it has a a european one a, a japanese one this one is a california one i believe uh yeah and then it has a, a florida one too and there's also a couple other stickers like you got extra ones of these stickers um there's like a gas cap sticker it, it's, it's pretty cool it's definitely pretty cool but um but yeah, one thing that I find a bit weird on this truck is that the windows are like are clear, but then they're like tinted this weird, this weird red. But it's not really a big deal. But yeah, this thing, this truck is definitely a really good truck. Obviously, unfortunately, the um the track that we took it at at RCMS was mainly for twenty fourth scale crawlers, so this didn't really fit very well. They just kind of flipped over and got stuck, or I got kind of stuck on everything. But um. But I'm um, yeah, it's not a big deal. But yeah, again, this is an 18 scale, so it is a bit bigger than you know your Axial SCX 24 and your Enduro 24. Um, but yeah, speaking of Axial SCX 24, I think soon, maybe in the next uh, maybe a few weeks, maybe a month, because they're out of stock everywhere. Um, we're gonna be reviewing a Axial SCX 24 on this channel, so stay tuned for that if you want to see a video on that. But um, yeah, and yeah yeah this thing is really great so that basically finishes up this video if you liked it smash that like button and that subscribe button and that notification bell so you never miss our uploads um maybe at some point we can take this to a better track um a better uh crawling course rather not really a track but yeah you know what i mean maybe at some point we'll take this to a better crawling course um or maybe just we'll set up a little course in the yard take some rocks and and sticks and stuff and just set up a little thing but yeah See you guys later. Bye.